distance from Saipan to Tokyo is 2,500 kilometers, short enough for a B-29 bomber to make an air raid. Saipan was a crucial location that the Japanese army could not afford to have taken over by the enemy. Toyota sent the entire combined fleet to Saipan. The main units the Yamato and Musashi battleships led at the forefront, with Vice Admiral Jizaburo Ozawa's carrier fleet following behind. It was the start of the fleet battle described by the Imperial Army. Ozawa raised the flag on the newly commissioned aircraft carrier Taihu and sailed out together with Zuikaku and Shokaku. On the flight deck were the Type Zero carrier fighters, and also the newly developed carrier bombers Suisse and carrier attack bombers Tenzan. It was the complete military air force of the combined fleet. This strategy utilizes Japan's aircraft to their full potential. Japanese aircraft leave from an area American aircraft cannot reach and depart for an attack before the American fleet can find them. These tactics should have brought victory to the Japanese fleet. Ozawa and Imperial headquarters believe so. But when the first attack corps reached the U.S. Air Fleet, something unexpected happened. 475 fighters, more than twice as many as the Japanese aircraft, dived onto the Japanese corps. American carrier fighters ambushed them. Carrier bomber Suisse and carrier attack bomber Tenzan's movements were extremely limited by the 250 kilogram bombs and 800 kilogram torpedoes. Many were young, ill-trained pilots who didn't know how to evade fire. For the Japanese who survived the American fighters' attacks and arrived over the U.S. fleet, a terrible new weapon, the VT fuse, was waiting. The VT fuse was an electronic weapon which exploded when it sensed the target's radio waves. Though Ozawa believed he would be victorious, his outranged tactics ended in miserable defeat. The victory of the U.S. Navy was supported by the high-performance radar which accurately located Ozawa's air corps and also by the electronic weapon, the VT fuse. The Japanese combined fleet lost about 200 precious aircraft out of 300. Moreover, the newest aircraft carriers, Taiho and Shokaku, along with many successful combat carriers in combat since Pearl Harbor, were lost to submarine attack. But Ozawa was still full of fight. On the next day, he organized the Air Corps with the rest of the aircraft and sent them to attack the American Air Fleet. But the Air Corps could not find them, and conversely, they were attacked by 150 American fighters. The Japanese combined fleet was obliterated. Yamato and Musashi left the front, having achieved virtually nothing. There was only one fleet carrier, Suikaku, left in the Japanese Navy. After the Battle of the Philippine Sea, Saipan, Tenyan, and Guam fell to the United States. The Japanese defense line moved back again. After this defeat, the tragic kamikaze attacks began. Pilots crashed into enemy ships.
Mariana Radio Kikai. The battles of the Philippine Sea and Leyte Bay proved Yamamoto's prediction. There is no navy without mastery of the air. The Japanese Navy expected to defeat the American fleet in the Battle of the Philippine Sea with their outrange tactics using the long range of Japanese aircraft. But the American fleet's effective electronic weapons, radar and VT fuse, prevented the Air Corps attack. The Japanese Navy lost many pilots and aircraft. Right after the campaign, the kamikaze attack started. It was too tragic. Many young pilots crashed into the enemy ships with their aircraft. I think the Navy's policy was behind this kamikaze attack. The leaders still clung to battleships for the fleet battle.